I have no memory of this place. Follow your nose. The air doesn't smell so foul down here. <laughs> hey, how's it going, you fiends? I'm Demi Bobemi. And I'm dead inside, and welcome back to another episode of Inheritance. I always want to say inheritance. I always yeah. want to say inheritance because we're in chairs. And we're tense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That's good. Tense because we're just dying to get to the end. So we can just throw it off the fucking, off a mountain. Just kidding. I don't feel that badly about the book. I just am ready to read something else. <laughs> Same. It's been, the theory wall has been up there for too long. I don't even know if we can wipe it away. <laughs> <laughs> and that might be an issue. That could be a problem. I guess you just want to hop right into a recap? Sure, dog. All right, we're hopping. Po we're, we're hopping and popping. Hopping and bopping, baby. And we ain't stopping till we're dropping. Demi's recap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Meanwhile, Aragon is doing things in that building. Air, uh, fuck, I forgot his name. Roran's like, what's happening in there? And he's all broken up and then he can't hear. And then um, all the elves are really mad and there's blood everywhere. And then a guy says, what's, uh, I'm an archer. And then like, there's a pew, out of the building. And they're like, what the fuck? And then everything's on fire. I don't really remember what that's supposed to be. But that happened. And then um, Roran said, oh, no, Aragon. Dang. That was a good recap. Thanks. Fire. I don't remember what's supposed to be. It's just Galbatorix exploding himself. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Telling himself to be not. But I keep thinking that Shrew can, like, that's what it feels like it should be to me, but I know it's not that. Like Shuriken had one last fucking breath of flame and yeah, fire and went, that <laughs> was supposed to get everybody or something. Yeah, just out of like anguish or something. How cool would that have been if Shuriken's dying breath was like a roaring inferno that killed Galbatorix? As he was, like, crying in pain. That would have been so fucking unexpected. And then Aragon just had to, like, save, like, himself and, like, used all the energy of everybody that maybe was a suicide save. But, may, may, mm -hmm. I mean, we don't know what happened, you know? Yeah. That kind of would have been cool. That would have been cool. But Galvatorix be knotted. Be knotted. You know what I really like about my shirt? What do you like about your shirt? Tell us. That you can't get it anymore. But also, <laughs> that I dripped mustard on it when we were eating. We had like a little barbecue, mm -hmm. and I was eating a hot dog, and mustard <laughs> squirted out the back of the hot dog. But it landed right on Demi's mouth on the shirt. <laughs> so it looks like <laughs> there's hot dog mustard coming out of Demi's mouth. I do love a good hot dog. I just realized, like, that because I was like, oh, like I'm wearing a shirt. Like, that's, like, relevant to the channel because mm -hmm. this was, like, you know, limited merch that was available for a time. And then I was like, oh, fuck, I got hot dog on it or mustard on it. And then I was like, oh, but it's, like, perfectly just, like, on Demi's mouth. That is weirdly perfect. Perfect for the hot dog queen. Chapter 70. A Sea of Nettles. Uh-oh. Darkness. And in that darkness... Silence. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> Wait, is this like the great beyond? Did he get dead? Nah. Aragon felt him slide to a stop. Then, nothing. He could breathe, but the air was stale and lifeless. And when he tried to move, the strain upon his spell increased. He touched the minds of everyone around him, checking that he had managed to save them all. Elva was unconscious, and Murtag nearly so, but they were alive, as were the rest. It was the first time Aragon had come into contact with Thorn's mind. As he did, the red dragon seemed to recoil. His thoughts felt darker, more contorted than Saphira's, but there was a strength and nobility to him that impressed Aragon. We cannot maintain the spell for much longer, said Umaroth, his voice tense. You have to, said Aragon. <laughs> if you don't, we'll die. 
seconds more passed. Without warning, light flooded Aragon's eyes and an onslaught of noise assailed his ears. He winced and blinked while his eyes adjusted. Through the smoke-filled air, he saw a huge glowing crater where Galbatorix had been standing. The incandescent stone pulsed like living flesh as breaths of air wafted over its surface. The ceiling glowed as well, and the sight unnerved Aragon. It was as if they were standing inside a giant crucible. The air smelled like the taste of iron. The walls of the room were cracked, and the pillars, carvings, and lanterns, lanterns had been pulverized. At the back of the chamber lay Shurokin's corpse, much of the flesh stripped from his suit-blackened bones. Jesus. At the front, the explosion had shattered the stone walls, as well as the walls beyond for hundreds of feet, exposing a veritable warren of tunnels and rooms. The beautiful golden doors that had guarded the entrance to the chamber had been blown off their hinges, and Aragon thought he glimpsed daylight at the far end of the quarter-mile-long hallway that led to the outside. As he got to his feet, he noticed that his ward was still drawing strength from the dragons, but not so quickly as before. A piece of stone the size of a house fell from the ceiling and landed next to Shruikin's skull, where it split into a dozen pieces. Around them, more cracks spread through the walls, ominous shrieks, and groans sounding from every side. Okay, so there's that little description that he threw in. Um, I felt like I feel like after just like reading other stuff and reading mm -hmm. other books and reading just like whatever, I feel like that little tiny bit of description was like okay like it's a little thing but it's like that is i think the ultimate problem that we've had with cp through this series is like that description is unnecessary because it doesn't do anything at all it doesn't world build it doesn't mm -hmm. like like end up meaning anything it's like like it's a tiny thing but it's i'm just picking that out because it just most mm -hmm. recently happened where he's talking about the stone the size of a house fell from the ceiling and landed next to Shuriken's skull where it split into a dozen pieces. You know, like that's, mm -hmm. I know it's only seven words, but that's seven words that doesn't need to be in there. I mean, I guess like it, I don't think it's that meaningless because it's like, huge pieces of this structure is like falling down and like shattering on the ground and it's like time to fucking go. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I, I just think the fact that it, it split into dozens of pieces doesn't necessarily like add anything to the overall thing, which is like pieces of stone are falling from the mm -hmm. ceiling. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, you don't have to say that it's shattered. The stone the size of a house is falling from the ceiling. Like, I know it's either going to shatter or not. Like, I can imagine that in my brain. I don't need you to, like, imagine that for me or tell me that that's happening because it's a giant hunk of stone. Yeah. But, like, like I understand the importance of, like, getting out of there quick because the ceiling is literally collapsing on you. But I, like, don't need to know that it, like, broke into dozens. Of, like, you don't have to tell me that. Mm -hmm. But that's... I'm saying... I prefaced it with it's a small thing in yeah. this paragraph specifically, but those types of details where it doesn't like mean anything ultimately yeah, have it's... just been a commonplace throughout the entire series. And like, I think that type of writing is like what has been like driving us fucking bonkers. <laughs> it, I find it distracting. Yeah. And we've talked about it before, yeah. but it's like breaking the immersion a bit. Yeah. It's like, cause then I'm like, wait, you're you're like taking me off into like a, the wrong direction a little bit too. It's just like I don't know. No, like I agree. Cuz then it's like, "Oh, I'm like going to talk about all this stuff." And I'm like, "They need to go." Like you brought this up a long time ago. Like it just seems like sometimes like a little bit too wordy like a high schooler writing an essay to like fill in words. Yeah, like you had a 500 word like minimum and you're like therefore vis-a-vis ergo I think it is a bit of, like, I don't know, like, editing, how many passes editors, how many editors he had mm -hmm. passed through it. Because it, it does feel like that that thing, like, that kind of stuff would be cleaned up by editors. 
I mean, or maybe he didn't have good editors if he had editors at all, too, because they could have just been like, yep, looks good, whatever. Arya went to the two children, grabbed the boy around his waist, and climbed with him up onto Saphira's back. Once there, she pointed at the girl and said to Aragon, throw her to me. Aragon lost a second as he struggled to sheath Brisinger, then he grabbed the girl and tossed her to Arya, who caught her in outstretched arms. Like, I feel like we're just, I feel like I'm just nitpicking now, but it's like, he could have literally cut out 10 words and said, she thing Brisinger, he grabbed the girl and tossed her to Arya. I, was just saying, yeah. like, <laughs> I think, I think when it comes to chapters like this, where there should be like really fast pacing, when you're too descriptive, it's slowing it down and it's not giving me a sense of urgency Ooh, in the that's, chapter. That's fucking right on the head. Like that's what, cause I'm like, like, like we need to like go. The fucking place is crumbling. Like why are we, I don't care about your outstretched arms and the dozens of pieces of the shit on the ground. Like it needs to be like written quicker. Mm, yes. That, I think maybe also that's why I'm being so nitpicky right now is cause like that is bugging me. I think like mm -hmm. underneath it all, like that is also what's bugging me. It's like the pacing, <laughs> you know? Yeah, because when he's like, oh, the fucking ceiling is groaning. And I'm like, okay, well, it's time for them to go. And we're not, I feel like we're not. And then a, and then a giant stone the size of a house fell down, shattering into 12 separate individual, equally sized pieces <laughs> near Shrewkin's skull, the dragon that Galbatorix owned that just died. <laughs> and it's like... Are My we... eyes twitching. <laughs> <laughs> like, are we going to go or what? I like how we, though, essentially are doing exactly what, That's what we're complaining about. <laughs> I am... We're like dragging this fast-paced well, chapter out even listen. more. Th we're, we're doing it for a point, though. We're making a point with it. We're showing that the pacing affects... We planned this we... conversation yeah, out. Yeah, this is all scripted, by the way. <laughs> all of our videos are scripted. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> Everyone's going to be questioning if any of this is even real. End quote. Repeat the line. <laughs> Did you see that? Wait, what? Did you see that? Biden was reading from a teleprompter and he said he was like reading something and he goes, end of the quote. Repeat the line. Says it out loud verbally. Like he read what was on the teleprompter. And he I mean, said, end of the quote, repeat the line. To be fair, they told him to read the teleprompter. <laughs> Registered to vote and cast a ballot is consistently higher than the percentage of the men who do so. End of quote. Repeat the line. You stay classy, San Diego. I'm Ron Burgundy? Damn it! Who typed a question mark on the teleprompter? For the last time, anything you put on that prompter, Burgundy will read. Aragon turned and sidestepped Elva as he hurried over to Naswada. Jarda, he said, placing a hand on the manacles that held her to the block of gray stone. The spell had no apparent effect, so he ended it quickly before it consumed too much energy. Naswada made an urgent sound, and he pulled the knotted cloth out of her mouth. You have to find the key, she said. Gabatorix's jailer has it on him. We'll never find him in time! Aragon drew Brisinger again and swung at the chain connected to the manacle around her left hand. The sword bounced off the links with a harsh reverberation, leaving not so much as a scratch on the dull metal. He swung a second time, but the chain was impervious to his blade. Another piece of rock fell from the ceiling and struck the floor with a loud crack. A hand gripped his arm, and he turned to see Murtag standing behind him, one arm pressed against the wound on his stomach. Move aside, he growled. Aragon did, and Murtag spoke the name of all names as he had before, as well as Jarda, and the iron cuffs opened and fell from Naswada's limbs. Murtag took her by the wrist, and he began to lead her toward Thorn. After his first step, she slipped under his arm and allowed him to lean his weight on her shoulders. So Murtag is now the most powerful fucking person in the <laughs> world, right? He has a name of all names. Yeah, now he's going to be... Big bad daddy of the realm. Murtag has a name of all names and he can't just name of all names save them? He can't just name of all names the fucking wound out of his stomach? <laughs> Are we just gonna, is he suffering on purpose? I don't really understand what's going on. Like he doesn't have any Eldenari that he can call upon? Like, hmm. 
We can't just name of all names literally anything in this situation, or... I think it still requires energy, but... Like, yeah, he, Galbatorx gave him Eldenari. Where his Eldenari at? Where they at, you know? He was able to heal... Remember? He was able mm -hmm. to heal thorns, like, broken-ass, mangled wing one time. So... I'm just saying. Hmm, interesting. Aragon opened his mouth and closed it. He would ask his questions later. Maybe that's the question. Good idea. <laughs> Wait! cried Arya, and she leapt down from Saphira and ran over to Murtag. Where is the egg? And the Eldenari? We can't leave them. Arya's fucking thinking. Thank God for Arya. Murtag frowned, and Aragon felt the information pass between him and Arya. Arya spun around, her burnt hair flying, and sprinted toward a doorway on the opposite side of the room. It's too dangerous, Aragon shouted after her. This place is falling apart, Arya. Go, she said. Get the children to safety. Go, you haven't much time. Aragon cursed. At the very least, he wished she had taken Glader with her. He slid Brisinger back into its scabbard, then bent and picked up Elva, who was just beginning to stir. So, like, he keeps, like, whipping Brisinger out, putting it back. It just reminds me of, like, Sea of Thieves when you're, like, like, when your character is, like, stuck on, like, its unsheathed sword mm -hmm. and you're like using the cannon or like moving yeah, around like, and so it keeps going <laughs> like as you're doing yeah. different tasks <laughs> uh, wait what's going on with Elva she's like fucking knocked out or something yeah she's like passed out or something okay oh cause uh, she passed out from him exploding himself okay what's happening she asked as Aragon carried her up onto Saphira's back behind the other two children we're leaving he said Hold on. Saphira had already started moving, limping because of her wounded foreleg. She trotted around the crater. Thorn followed close behind her. Murtag and Asawada upon his back. Any other dragons want to join the fucking dragon convoy? I don't know why, but my brain, when you're like her her wounded forearm or foreleg, foreleg yeah. um, I thought you were saying that about Elva. And I was like, wait, <laughs> when did she get extra legs? Like, it's like what's when going did, on? When did they all hop on Elva's back? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, sorry, what's going on? Look out, shouted Aragon, as he saw a chunk of the glowing ceiling break loose directly overhead. Saphira shied to her left, and the jagged piece of stone landed next to her and sent a burst of straw yellow shards in every direction. One of them struck Aragon in the side and lodged in his mail. He picked it out and threw it away. Smoke trailed from his fingers of his gloves as he smelt burnt leather. More pieces of stone fell elsewhere in the chamber. When Saphira arrived at the mouth of the hallway, Aragon twisted and looked back at Murtag. What of the traps, he shouted. Murtag shook his head and waved for them to continue. <laughs> Fucking love that. He's like, not even talking. Oh, I guess he is, like, dying. He can't be bothered. <laughs> he fucking just cannot be bothered. Piles of broken stone covered the floor along much of the hallway, which slowed the dragons. To either side, Aragon could see into the rubble-filled rooms and tunnels that the explosion had torn open. Within them, tables, chairs, and other pieces of furniture burned. The limbs of the dead and dying stuck out at odd angles. From beneath the tumbled stones, occasionally, a grimy face or the back of a head. He looked for Bloodgarm and his spellcasters, but saw no sign of them either, dead or alive. He looked for Bloodgarm and his spellcasters, but saw no sign of them, either dead or alive. Farther down the hallway, hundreds of people, soldiers and servants alike, poured out of the adjoining doorways and ran toward the now gaping entrance. Broken limbs were common among them, as were burns, scrapes, and other wounds. The survivors moved aside for Saphira and Thorn, but otherwise ignored the dragons. Saphira was nearly at the end of the hall when a thunderous crash sounded behind them, and Aragon looked back to see that the throne room had caved in on itself, burying the chamber floor under a pile of stone fifty feet thick. Talking about, like, pacing, I'm getting, like, a boom, 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 mm -hmm. boom, we're all meandering towards the exit, like, type of, yeah, like, feeling, not, like, like a high-paced, like, I don't know why I just thought of, like, Indiana Jones, but, like, Indiana Jones being, like, bum, 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 <laughs> like, like yeah. try, trying to escape this collapsing tunnel, and then, like, barely making it out and reaching for his Indiana Jones hat, like, as yeah. the fucking final rock falls type of thing. Yeah. I'm getting, like, a boom, like, a little convoy of dragons, like, they're big elephants just walking down the hallway, and then, and then looking back and going, oh, 
Ooh. Looks like the throne room caved in. Uh-oh, Arya. I don't know. I just, yeah, because I feel like um, to make the to make it faster, you have to use small talk. You know what I mean? Like you need shorter sentences with less description because we're when you are in a situation like that, you're not like you use small talk. <laughs> well, yeah, but it's like I don't notice I don't notice the straw colored gemstones that are falling. Your brain isn't really like registering that information. Like you're not conscious of it. It's like big rock fall, me out way. Big hot rock, ow, me go. <laughs> yeah, like well, maybe just our brains. Mm. Arya, thought Aragon. He tried to find her with his mind, but without success. Either too much material separated them, or one of the spells woven throughout the mind out crack blocked his mental probe. Or, the one alternative he hated to consider, she was dead. <laughs> she had not been in the room when it collapsed, that much he knew, but he wondered if she would be able to find her way back out again, now that the throne room was blocked. Eh, she's squirrely. <laughs> You know, should be good. As they emerged from the citadel, the air cleared and Aragon was able to see the destruction that the blast had wrecked on Uruban. It had ripped off the slate roofs of many nearby buildings and set fire to the beams underneath. Scores of fires dotted the rest of the city. The threads and plumes of smoke drifted upward until they collided with the underside of the shelf above. There they pooled and flowed along the angled surface of the stone like water over a steam bed stream bed like water over a stream bed by the southeastern edge of the city the smoke caught the light of the morning sun as it seeped through the side of the overhang and where the smoke glowed with the reddish orange color and there the smoke glowed with the reddish orange color of a fire opal the people of uruban were <laughs> <laughs> i just like i think that i would have liked for like the entire time that they were in the actual citadel or whatever, I wish that would have been just like a little bit quicker. And, and then, and then upon like yeah. exiting, that it would have been like, like a sense of relief, like we're out of the building, like we're kind of out of danger for the time being, and then like noticing the the aftermath of what and then had happened. Awestruck, yeah, like, kind of like that frozen awestruck, taking in everything and hyper focused, yeah, adrenaline fueled. Mm -hmm like whoa type yeah. of mesmerized what can you do though <laughs> what can you do and like i mean this probably won't make final cut but like it's also just like too like wordy of a description that i'm like i'm like halfway through the description i'm like i don't give a fuck anymore half of the shit half of the <laughs> half of the descriptions i'm like i don't give a fuck i'm like i'm like it's so much description that my brain starts to wander and that just, that literally might just be our brain, but, and also it might just be like it being read out loud or something, but it's like, yeah, my, my, I'm reading that and I just like hone in on fire opal and I'm like, wait, what's a fire opal? What yeah. looks fire opal-ish? I do that when, while I am reading like in my brain though. Like if it gets too wordy and like descriptive, I will space out. Okay, we've made it like two pages okay. and we've shat five pages worth. So it's like okay. dial it back a little bit and we'll shit on it at the end. Great. <laughs> you got it. The people of Uruban were fleeing their houses, streaming through the streets toward the hole in the outer wall. The soldiers and servants from the citadel hurried to join them, giving Sephira and Thorn a wide berth as they ran across the courtyard in front of the fortress. Aragon paid them little attention. As long as they remained peaceful, he did not care what they did. Sephira stopped in the middle of the quadrangle like a square yeah i just <laughs> i just felt like i said that word kind of weird oh i thought you were like confused about what it is but then mm -hmm. also like why can't he just say square oh i did have a real thing to say um so do these people like the people of uruban do they like have any fucking clue what's going on right now no like there was just like they like really have as much of a less of a clue even than roran well i'm just saying like Siege was laid upon their city. Mm, oh, you know I see what, what I mean? Saying. Like, all of a sudden, they're just getting fucking attacked. Like, and then, like, and this, then a bomb goes off. Yeah, then a bomb goes off, and everything's on fucking fire. Like, do they, like, do they, what, do they even have any idea what's going on? Like, were they prepared for this? Was this something they were, like, 
or anticipating? Was it like the country's at war? Like we might be attacked? You know what I mean? Or is this just like fucking random? I don't know. Because I mean, like usually when a city's under siege like that, I don't think people are just like chilling in their homes. Like usually don't they like gather up everybody into like a big shelter in place type of area? Like I a would, big great hall or something? Yeah, I would think to keep all the... I don't know. I don't know. Maybe somebody in the comment section can explain like medieval tactics. Like, cause I know that typically like people didn't live inside of the castle walls, mm -hmm. but then would like flee into the castle when under siege, like little peasant farmer people mm -hmm. like outside. But like, how did that go for people that were living inside of the castle walls or how would it have gone? Or just like, even just your thoughts on it. Like, do you think these people are just, like, chilling in their home? Or do you think they were all, like, hunkered down, like, in bunkers or something Yeah, for like, protection? anticipating. Because, like... At least the people that, like, couldn't, wouldn't Yeah. Because I was thinking, couldn't. like, like, do they have any... Like, was this something that they were, like, prepared for at all? Right. Because, yeah, just, I don't know. I just wondered that because... You I'm, would think that they would be prepared because Galbatorix knows so much. But yeah. then he's also a shitty king, so... Mm -hmm. they. He, I mean, there's not really, at least yet any any sort of like confirmation that the people of got of uruban mm -hmm. were expecting or not expect there's like oh, yeah. no confirmation going either way so Sophia stopped in the middle of the quadrangle Qua Qua is that right quadrangle i don't know how else you would say it i think that normal people just say square so I just feel like I'm saying it like quadrangle. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a good word. No, he should have just said square. <clears throat> and that's really nitpicky. I know, but I just, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I can't help it. Sephira stopped in the middle of the square and Aragon lowered Elva and the two nameless children to the ground. Do you know where your parents are? He asked, kneeling by the siblings. They nodded and the boy pointed toward a large house on the left side of the courtyard. Is that where you live? The boy nodded again. Go on then, said Aragon, and gave them a gentle push on the back. Without further prompting, the brother and sister ran across the courtyard to the building. The door to the house flew open, and a balding man with a sword at his belt stepped out and wrapped the two of them in his arms. He gave Aragon a glance, then hurried the children inside. I thought everything was on fire. It's not everything. Oh, not their house, I guess. That's good. So it would appear that if we just would have waited a few more sentences... That we would have learned that people are just chilling in their houses. But if I know anything, it's that I don't have patience when it comes to stories. That was easy, Aragon said to Sephira. Galbatorix must have had his men find the nearest hatchlings. She replied, we didn't give him time to do much else. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> My fucking response exactly, like, is he aware like, is he actually self-aware of his own writing? It feels like it sometimes. Sometimes I feel like he knows, and I'm like, but if you knew, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Thorn sat a number of yards away from Sephira, and Nasawada helped Murtag down from his back. Then Murtag slumped against Thorn's belly. Aragon heard him begin to recite spells of healing. Aragon likewise attended to Sephira's wounds, ignoring his own for hers were more serious. The gash on her left foreleg was as wide as both his hands put together, and a pool of blood was forming about her foot. Tooth or claw, he asked as he examined the wound. Claw, she said. He used her strength, as well as Glader's, to mend the gash. When he finished, he turned his attention to his own wounds, starting with the burning line of pain in his side, where Murtag had stabbed him. Forgot <laughs> that happened. Holy shit. Yeah, remember in my last recap, I was like, they stabbed each other or something. Well, I'm just saying it's been like so long. Yeah, that's and so true. So much has happened. Fuck, how that it's like he's been running around with a stab wound in his side. Okay, that has to be adrenaline, right? When people have like wounds like that and they're just still yeah. like. Oh, yeah, definitely. Because I just imagine like I'd be such a little baby ass bitch. I'd be like, go on without oh. me. I won't make it. And you're like, it's, it's a scratch. Like, it's a hangnail. Like, you'll be fine. <laughs> as he worked, he kept an eye on Murtag. Watched as Murtag healed his gut wound, Thorn's broken wing, and the dragon's other injuries. 
Nasawada stayed by him the whole while, her hand on his shoulder. He had, Aragon saw, somehow reacquired Zarok on the way out of the throne room. Aragon then turned to Elva, who was standing nearby. She appeared pained, but he saw no blood upon her. Are you hurt? he asked. Her brow fur furrowed and she shook her head. No, but many of them are, and she pointed at the people fleeing the citadel. Mm-hmm. Aragon glanced over at Murtag again. He and Nasawada were standing now, talking to each other. Nasawada frowned. Then Murtag reached out, grasped the neck of her tunic, and pulled it to the side, tearing the fabric. Aragon had drawn Bersinger halfway out of its sheath before he, before he saw the map of angry-looking welts below Nasawada's collarbone. The sight struck him like a blow. It reminded him of the wounds on Arya's back after he and Murtag had rescued her from Gilead. Nasawada nodded and bowed her head. Again, Murtag began to speak. This time, Aragon was sure in the ancient language. He placed his hands upon various parts of Nasawada's body, his touch gentle, even hesitant, and her expression of relief was all the evidence Aragon needed to understand how much pain she had been suffering. Aragon watched for a minute longer, then a sudden rush of emotion swept through him. His knees grew weak, his arms heavy, vomit on his sweater already. <laughs> And he sat on Safira's right paw. She lowered her head and nuzzled his shoulder, and he leaned his head against her. What were you going to say? I say, I could feel you going in that direction in my soul. We did it, she said in a quiet tone. We did it, he said, hardly to believe his, the words. He could feel Safira thinking about Shurikin's death. As dangerous as Shurikin had been, she still mourned the passing of one of the last remaining members of her race. Aragon gripped her scales. <laughs> Jesus, don't Just fucking, like, don't fucking like pull him out. Fuck. He felt light, almost dizzy, as if he might float away from the surface of the earth. Goodbye. Yeah, because you probably lost a lot of blood. <laughs> yeah, you're like dying. But now, now we will rebuild, or now we will rebuild," said Glader. His own emotions were a curious mixture of satisfaction, grief, and weariness. You acquitted yourself well, Aragon. No one else would have thought to attack Galbatorix as you did. I just wanted him to understand, he murmured warily. But if Glader heard, he chose not to respond. Yeah. I, I fucking understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we know. You don't have to fucking stroke your own dick about it. Like, <laughs> come on. At last, the Oathbreaker is dead, crowed Umaroth. It seemed, um, it seemed impossible that Galbatorix was no more. As Aragon contemplated the fact, something within his mind seemed to release, and he remembered, as if he had never forgotten, everything that had transpired during their time in the Vault of Souls. A tingle passed through them. Sephira! I know, she said, her excitement rising. The eggs! Aragon smiled. Eggs. <laughs> I forgot about the eggs. Dragon eggs. Eggs. <laughs> Well, yeah, you weren't supposed to remember until Galbatorix was dead. Fuck. As a race, they would not pass into the void. They would survive and flourish and return to their former glory, as they had before the fall of the riders. Then a, then a horrible suspicion occurred to him. Did you make us forget anything else? He asked Umaroth. If we did, how would we know? Replied the white dragon. <laughs> and that's the end of the chapter bye look cried elva pointing aragon turned and saw Arya walking out of the dark maw of the citadel with her were bloodgarm and his spell casters bruised and scraped but alive in her arms Arya carried a wooden chest fitted with gold hasps a long line of metal boxes each the size of the back of a wagon floated along behind the elves a few inches above the floor. Elated, Aragon sprang up and ran over to meet them. You're alive! He, su he surprised Bloodgarn by grabbing the fur-covered elf and embracing him. Do elves hug? I don't think so. I think that's why he's I, like... What the fuck? Yeah, I feel like they don't touch each other. Get off me, little boy. <laughs> <laughs> Bloodgarn regarded him for a moment with his yellow eyes, and then he smiled, showing his fangs. We are alive, Shade Slayer. Are those the... Eldenari? Aragon asked, speaking the word softly. Arya nodded. 
What a dweeb. Right. <laughs> they were in Galbatorix's treasure room. They were in Galbatorix's treasure room, Aragon. <laughs> we will have to go back at some point. There are many wonders hidden therein. <laughs> Should have read the entire series, like Arya talking to him like a fucking little oh dweeb. Oh my god. How are they? The Eldenari, I mean. Confused. It will take them years to recover, if ever they do. And is that Aragon motioned toward the chest she carried? Arya glanced around to make sure no, no one was close enough to see. Then she lifted the lid, the width of a finger. Inside, nestled in velvet, Aragon saw a beautiful green dragon abe, egg. I almost said Abe. <laughs> <clears throat> Inside, nestled in velvet, Aragon saw a beautiful green dragon egg webbed with veins of white. The joy in Arya's face lifted Aragon's heart. He grinned and beckoned to the other elves. When they had gathered close to him, he whispered in the ancient language and told him of the eggs on Vroengard. <gasps> Why you much, much more <laughs> eggs? More eggs. <laughs> Eggs, 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 eggs. <laughs> they did not shout or laugh, but their eyes gleamed, and as a group, they seemed to vibrate with excitement. <laughs> Still grinning, Aragon bounced on his heels, delighted by their reaction. It just reminds me of like a bunch of like little, I don't know, dweebs. like a little bunch of little dweebs, and like, yeah, Attack on Titan season four is coming out. <laughs> <laughs> Then Safira said, Aragon. At the same time, Arya frowned and said, Where are Thorn and Murtag? They just dipped and like no one <laughs> noticed? Okay. Jesus. Aragon shifted his gaze and saw Nazawada standing alone in the courtyard. <laughs> Next to her was a pair of saddlebags that Aragon did not remember seeing on Thorn. Wind swept over the courtyard and he heard the sound of wings flapping, but of Murtag and Thorn, nothing was vi visible. Aragon cast his thoughts out toward where he thought they were he felt them at once for their minds were not hidden but they refused to speak or listen to him blast it muttered aragon as he ran over to naswata there were tears on her cheeks and she seemed on the verge of losing her composure where are they going away her chin trembled then she took a breath released it and stood taller than before <sighs> cursing aragon bent and pulled open the saddlebags Within, he found a number of smaller Eldenari enclosed in padded cases. Arya! Bloodgarm! he shouted, pointing at the saddlebags. The two elves nodded. We, we figured know. it out already. <laughs> we used our minds. We felt the presence of the Eldenari with our minds, Aragon. We don't have to fucking go and physically open up every little fucking thing to see what's in it. Aragon does, though. Aragon ran over to Saphira. He did not have to explain himself. She understood. She spread her wings as he climbed onto her back, and the moment he was settled in the saddle, she took flight from the courtyard. Cheers rose from the city as Avardin caught sight of her. Saphira flapped quickly, following Thorn's musky scent trail through the air. It led her south, out from under the shadow of the overhang, and then it turned and curved up around the great stone outcrop, heading north toward the Rammer River. I don't fucking know anything <laughs> direction-wise where anything is! <laughs> you know like yeah just tell me following this you could even just you could even leave it at south following the musky scent trail south for several miles the trail ran straight and level when the broad tree-lined river was almost underneath them the scent began to angle downward see how much like cleaner that feels yeah Aragon studied the ground ahead and saw a flash of red by the foot of a small hill on the other side of the river. Over there, he said, to Saphira, but she had already spotted Thorn. She spiraled down and landed softly atop the hill, where she had the advantage of height. The air off the water was cool and moist, carrying with it the scent of moss, mud, and sap. Between the hill and the river lay a sea of nettles. The plants grew in such thick profusion, the only way to pass through them would have been to cut a path. Their dark, saw-toothed leaves rubbed against each other with a gentle susurration that blended with the sound of the rushing river. By the edge of the nettle sat Thorn. Murtag stood next to him, adjusting the girth on his saddle. Aragon loosened Brisinger in its sheath, then cautiously approached. Without turning around, Murtag said, Have you come to stop us? That depends. 
where are you going and what the fuck are you doing yeah like what the fuck's going on i don't know <laughs> like there's a lot that depends on what the fuck you're doing like <laughs> i don't fuck like maybe maybe <laughs> not <laughs> that depends <laughs> <laughs> i don't know north maybe somewhere away from other people you could stay Murtag uttered a bark of mirthless laughter. You know better than that. It would only cause Nasawada problems. Besides, the doors would never stand for it. Not after I killed Hrothgar. He glanced over, he glanced over his shoulder at Aragon. Gobletorx used to call me King Killer. You're King Killer as well now. It seems to run in the family. You'd better keep an eye on Roran then. And Arya is a dragon killer. That can't be easy for her. An elf killing a dragon. You should talk to her and make sure she's alright. Fucking Murtag. Murtag's insight surprised Aragon. I will. Why is that surprising to you, Aragon? What do you mean? Like, he's not a piece of shit fucking asshole. Like, he was under a fucking magic spell to do things that he didn't want to do. He knew Murtag before the shitty people magic spell. And he wasn't, like, a bad dude. Yeah. So, like, and he, I don't know. I just feel like he knew so much information and, like, knew just, like, how the world fucking worked. that I'm like, I don't know why you're surprised, but whatever. I guess it could be mildly surprising that he, like, is showing so much. Because he's always been kind of, like, about himself. Mm -hmm. That he's showing so much presence of mind towards Arya, which is like who's Arya to him right yeah and like the That's, only yeah i mean but he's got a girl worth fighting for now so this is true i like his little you better keep an eye on roaring then because <laughs> yeah uh-oh funny foreshadowing N no just funny joke okay i was just Murtag be funny you know he knows serious, crazy Murtag now. He's funny, <laughs> like hearted Murtag. Make joke. There, said Murtag, giving the strap a final tug. Then he turned to face Aragon, and Aragon saw that he had been holding Xerok closed against his body, drawn and ready to use. So, again, have you come to stop us? No. Murtag gave a thin smile and sheathed Xerok. Good. I would hate to have to fight you again. How were you able to break free of Galbatorix? It was your true name, wasn't it? Murtag nodded. As I said, I'm not. We're not. He touched Thorn's side. What we once wore. It just took a while to realize it. And Nasawada. Murtag frowned. Then he turned away and stared out over the Sea of Nettles. As Aragon joined him. Murtag said in a low voice, Do you remember the last time we were at this river? It would be hard to forget. I can still hear the screams of the horses. You, Zephira, Arya, and me, all together, ensure that nothing could stop us. Wait, what? Yeah, Wasn't, like, Arya unconscious? Yeah, she didn't even... Wait, what? Wait, when the fuck was this? Where was like I? in the first book. And Arya was there, but... Yeah, because they saved her from Gilead. Yeah. And they were, like, transporting her to the Varden. Mm-hmm. And they were headed up to the dwarf people. Right. But she didn't even wake up till... Yeah, she was, like, fucking passed out. Maybe he meant, like, him and Murtag were, like, on top of the world. I don't know. Maybe. Well, this is Murtag speaking. Okay. <laughs> Who the fuck ever? I don't know. <laughs> In the back of his mind, Aragon could feel Saphira and Thorn talking to each other. Saphira, he knew, would tell him later what had passed between them. What will you do? He asked Murtag. Sit and think. Maybe I'll build a castle. I have the time. You don't have to leave. I know it would be difficult, but you have family here. Me, and also Roran. He's your cousin as well as mine, and you've never even met him. You belong as much to Carvajal and Palancar Valley as you do to Uruban, maybe more. Murtag shook his head and continued to stare over the nettles. It wouldn't work. Thorn and I need time alone. We need time to heal. If we stay, 
we'd be too busy to figure things out for ourselves. Good company and staying busy are often the best cure for a sickness of the soul. Not for what Galbatorix did to us. Besides, it would be painful to be around Oswata right now, for both her and me. No, we have to leave. How long do you think you'll be gone? Until the world no longer seems quite so hateful, and we no longer feel like tearing down mountains and feeling the sea with blood. Quite Holy shit. <laughs> quite the angst there. <laughs> to that, Aragon had no response. They stood looking at the river, where it lay behind a line of low willow trees. The rustling of the nettles grew louder, stirred by the westward wind. Then Aragon said, When you no longer wish to be alone, come find us. You'll always be welcome at our hearth. Wherever that may be, we will, I promise. To Aragon's surprise, he saw a gleam appear in Murtag's eyes. It vanished a second later. You know, Murtag said, I never thought you could do it. But I'm glad you did. <laughs> Thanks for the fucking vote of confidence, there, Murtag. <laughs> it's a bit of a backhanded compliment, I think, but whatever. I was lucky, and it wouldn't have been possible without your help. Even so, you found the Eldenari in the saddlebags? Aragon nodded. Good. Should we tell them? Aragon asked Safira, hoping that she would agree. She thought for a moment. Yes, but do not say where. You tell him and I will tell Thorn. As you wish, to Murtag, Aragon said. There's something you should know. Murtag gave him a sideways glance. The egg that Galbatorix had? It isn't the only one in Alagazia. There are more, hidden in the same place where we found the Eldenari we brought with us. Murtag turned toward him, disbelief evident on his face. At the same time, Thorn arched his neck and uttered a joyful trumpet <laughs> that scared a flight of swallows from the branches of a nearby tree. How many more? Hundreds. For a moment... Murtag seemed unable to speak. Then, what will you do with them? Me? <laughs> <laughs> Aragon literally goes, me? <laughs> Who else would he be talking to? Or about? I think Safira and the Eldenari will have some say in the matter, but probably find somewhere safe for the eggs to hatch and start to rebuild the riders. Will you and Safira train them? Aragon shrugged. I'm sure the elves will help. You could as well if you join us. Murtag tilted his head back and released, and released a long breath. The dragons are going to return, and the riders as well. He laughed softly. The world is about to change. It has already changed. Aye. Yarg. <laughs> <laughs> Aye. So you and Sephira will become the new leaders of the riders, while Thorn and I will live in the wilderness. Aragon tried to say something to comfort him, but Murtag stopped him with a look. No, it is as it should be. You and Zephira will make better teachers than we would. I'm not so sure of that. Mm. <laughs> Aragon's like, I don't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, I like nine months ago. I learned my fucking letters. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Promise me one thing, though. What? When you teach them... Teach them not to fear. Fear is good in small amounts, but when it is a constant, pounding companion, it cuts it cuts away at who you are and makes it hard to do what you know is right. I'll try. I can't fucking teach people not to fear. It's like, chill the fuck out. Like, what? <laughs> also, that was, like, kind of deep, though. What? Murtag's talking about fearing things. Right. I just thought that was kind of deep. So deep I can't speak a sentence. <laughs> Can you expound on that? Um, just like I was just thinking like just people like in the real world like outside of Allegasia, but like like on planet Earth. Like yeah, here on <laughs> Earth. <laughs> um, just like scared people don't think clearly. You know, I just literally what he said, like scared people, like don't do what they know is right. Hmm. Then Aragon noticed that Sephira and Thorn were no longer speaking. The red dragon shifted and moved around her until he was able to peer down at Aragon. 
With the mental voice that was surprisingly musical, Thorne said, Thank you for not killing my rider, Aragon Murtag's brother. <laughs> <laughs> Is that that's, what he means by musical? Yeah, that's exactly what he means. It's the only thing he could mean. Yes, thank you, Murtag said dryly. <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. glad it... <laughs> Go ahead. I'm, gl I'm glad I didn't have to, Aragon said, looking thorn in one glittering blood-red eye. The dragon snorted, then bent and touched Aragon on the top of his head, tapping his scales against Aragon's helm. May the wind and the sun always be at your back. <laughs> And at yours, a sense of great anger, grief, and ambivalence pressed heavily against Aragon as Glader's consciousness enveloped his mind, and it seemed those of Murtag and Thorn, for they tensed as if in anticipation of battle. Aragon had forgotten that Glader, along with the other Eldenari, hidden within their invisible pocket of space, were present and listening. Oh, that's a weird thing to forget. Would that I could thank you for the same, said Glader, his words as bitter as an oak gall. You killed my body and you killed my rider. The statement was flat and simple and all the more terrible because of it. Murtag said, some Murtag said something with his thoughts, but Aragon did not know what it was, for it was directed to Glader alone and Aragon was privy only to Glader's reaction. No, I cannot said the gold dragon. However, I understand it was Galbatorx who drove you to it, and that it was he who swung your arm. Murtag, I cannot forgive, but Galbatorx is dead, and with him my desire for vengeance. Yours has always been a hard path since each of you hatched, but today you showed that your misfortunes have not broken you. You turned against Galbatorx when it might have gained you only pain, and by it you allowed Aragon to kill him. Today, you and Thorn proved yourselves worthy of being considered Shertugal in full, although you never had the proper instruction or guidance. That is admirable. Damn, they fucking made Shertugal just by doing that? Fuck. Got like a like an honorary di diploma. Yeah, just by <laughs> fucking defying Galbatorix. By changing their names because they became I think good Warren, guys. Should be sure to go now too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I guess he would need a dragon for that. <clears throat> Maybe he'll get one. Murtag bowed his head slightly, and Thorn said, "Thank you, Ebrethil." Which Aragon heard. Thorn's use of the honorific Ebrethil seemed to startle Murtag. For Murtag looked back at the dragon and opened his mouth as if he was going to say something. Then Umarot spoke. We know much of the difficulties you have faced, Thorn and Murtag. For we have watched you from afar, even as we have watched Aragon and Sephira. There are many things we would teach you once you are ready, but until then, we will tell you this. In your wanderings, avoid the barrows of Anghelm, where the one and only Urgul king, Kulk Karvek, lies in state. Avoid too the ruins of Rowengard and of El Harum. Beware the deeps, and tread not where the ground grows black and brittle, and the air smells of brimstone, for in those places evil lurks. Do this, and unless you are un do this, and unless you are greatly unfortunate, you shall not encounter danger beyond your ability to master. Murtag and Thorn thanked Umaroth, and then Murtag cast a glance in the direction of Urubain and said, "We should be off." He looked at Aragon again. Can you remember the name of the ancient language now, or is Galbatorix's magic still clouding your mind? I can almost remember it, but Aragon shook his head with frustration. Then Murtag spoke the name of names twice, first to remove the spell of forgetfulness Galbatorix had placed on Aragon, and then again so that Aragon and Sephira might learn the name for themselves. I wouldn't share it with anyone else, he said. If every magician knew the name of the ancient language, the language would be worse than useless. Aragon nodded, agreeing. Then Murtag held out his hand, and Aragon grasped him by the forearm. They stood there like that for a moment, gazing at each other. Be careful, Aragon said. You too, brother. Aw, Arag cute. Aragon hesitated, then nodded again. Brother, 
Fucking Dragon Bros. <laughs> Murtag checked the straps on Thorne's harness once more before he climbed up into the saddle. As Thorne spread his wings and started to move away, Murtag called out. See to it that Nasawada is well protected. Gobletorix had many servants, more than he ever told me about, and not all of them were bound to him by magic. Alone. They will seek revenge for the death of their master. Be on your guard at all times. There are those among them who are even more dangerous than the Razak. Then Murtag raised a hand in farewell. Aragon did likewise, and Thorn took three loping steps away from the Sea of Nettles and leaped into, leapt into the sky, leaving track-like gouges in the soft earth below. The sparkling red dragon circled over them once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six, and didn't stop and just kept circling and circling and circling. And then he turned and set off to the north, flapping with a slow, steady beat. Aragon joined Sephira on the crest of the low hill, and together they watched as Thorn and Murtag dwindled into a single star-like speck close to the horizon. <laughs> with, a sense of sad with a sense of sadness upon them both, Aragon took his place on Sephira's back, and they departed from the knoll and returned thence to... Uru Bayan. Um, I'm sad. Why? Because Murtag's gone. Because Murtag said, Fuck this shit, I'm out. Yeah, he said, I'm a good guy now, but I'm leaving. I'm sick of this shit. I mean, he basically said, like, I'm a good guy. I'm a good boy. I've always been a good boy. I was just forced to be a bad boy. But I know that people are fucking dumb as fuck and they just want to probably fucking no they probably just look at him like how people looked at morzan yeah an evil dragon boy and then he's also like i'm also like fucking pissed <laughs> i'm like fucking mad so i need to like get away from everybody yeah he's like i'm also like kind of traumatized so i gotta yeah. go it's pretty good uh i mean i guess he knows his true name so he knows his faults and so mm -hmm. he has a pretty good idea of who he is within himself and so he can go work on himself that's great uh, insight i wish most people had that kind of fucking insight and just knew when they needed to go work on themselves and would just go disappear into the wilderness and come back when they're better <laughs> <laughs> damn tell us how you really feel Speaking of wanting to disappear into the wilderness and go work on myself until I'm better. <laughs> I almost was like, that was a good book. We're not even done yet. I feel like that should be the end. What? <laughs> oh, because the story is all about Murtag for you. Yeah, it's over in roll credits. Um, I mean, there's still... We still got to wrap up Aragon's story. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Dude, we could get one more chapter and it would be over. <clears throat> Honestly, we could get, like, a sentence and it could all be over. <laughs> but there's, like, what, seven more chapters left? Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Ah! <laughs> yes, what? there's 78 chapters. Can we just end the book now, you think? Like, do you see what I'm saying? Is like, like, I could truly get one more chapter kind of, like, wrapping it up and then being, like, off to our next adventure and then like that could be like the end for me yep maybe they'll give us an epilogue of them rebuilding the empire um i was actually thinking like the other day when we watched the lord of the rings the first one and then because i was wondering because the last time we watched them, we kind of watched them all back to back and i couldn't really remember how they ended the <laughs> first movie right and i'm like well how the fuck are they gonna end it right in the middle of a goddamn story but like for its own movie, like, yes, obviously, it's set up to continue, but it kind of ended okay. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't feel, like, super Frodo fuck. and Sam went off on their own, and then yeah. Frodo's, like. And they all just kind of, like, swooped. <clears throat> and I was, like, that felt clean and, like, good. And I feel like I could get one more chapter of them being, like, all right, we're all now we're all <laughs> off onto our like rebuilding mission that also kind of would like leave it in a sense of like i want to know what happened i want to know more mm -hmm. but like a good conclusion at mm -hmm. the same time because like truly the story we started reading is over yep so like <clears throat> now we're just kind of 
we're going to be getting that lingering, like... It's going to be fucking seven chapters of just description. Yeah, but it's going to be, like, that lingering, like, I don't want the story to be over yet. Like, I've been, like, building this world for years and years and years, and it's hard to, like, wrap it up and end it because I'm so emotionally attached to it that we're going to, like, drag it up for seven more chapters. So, it'll be okay, though, I think. I think you'll probably be pleasantly surprised with how a lot of the rest of the chapters go. Okay. Murtag comes back. No, he won't. No, he won't. No, he won't. He's gone. He I mean, didn't die. Know. So, then, Mur- yeah. Murtag will be a good guy again. Yeah, but Ron does not get captured by Galvatorix. No, nope, that was wrong. And Nazwada and Aragon do not get heart. <sighs> nope. And someone, Oryx someone got does not die. Someone got captured by Galvatorix. I was just wrong about who it was. I just felt like someone's getting kidnapped. Orcs, there's still time. There's eight chapters, seven chapters left. There's time. Nazawada might be a writer, though. She's got pretty good odds. There's like four billion eggs. That's true. It is very true. I don't... <sighs> Please don't let Arya and Aragon end up together. Please, like, don't let that happen. We belong together. I will cringe and vomit at the same time if that happens. Well, that's just what happens when you cringe hard. You just vomit. A good cringe leaves you vomiting. You get a real good cringe going on. I just, like, does it have to happen? I don't want it to happen. It's going to happen. I just want him to, like, not like I want him to, like, be alone because, like, that's not really... I don't want, like, their weird forced relationship to happen. I want him to be, like, I've grown up and realized that it was just, like, some boyish infatuation and, like... You're just very exotic to me, baby. But, like, I kind of would almost like him to, like, reflect on that and say, like, it wasn't really, like, I was, like, in love with you. It was, like, an admiration for... You know what I mean? Like, I was just confusing my feelings and, like, what I was feeling was, like, respect and admiration for you and your abilities or something. And then it's like we can shake hands and we can be friends. But that's not going to happen. They're going to fucking tell each other their fucking names. <laughs> you think so? I don't know. I hope not. This whole time Arya is so, like, you know what I mean? I'll never give you my true name, Virginia. She's like... <laughs> She's like, you're kind of young for me, so I don't know. Like, this whole time she's been like, it's kind of grody. That must be kind of weird for humanoid thing, creature thingies. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like a weird aspect to be like a grown-ass adult, but you look like 25 25 or whatever. But you're like a grown-ass adult to your people. Well, I guess not. She's like 25 to her people, Mm -hmm. but to look 25 to humans and then like have humans that are, like, 20 years old or something. Mm-hmm. But they're, like, 20 years old and they, like, look like your age, but you're, like, 100 or something. Mm-hmm. And then to have, like, old people, old humans, like, younger than you. Yeah. That'd be kind of, like, a weird thing where they're, like, hey, good looking. You're, like, I have grandchildren older than you. And they're, like, ar, 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 of course <laughs> you do. And you're, like, no, seriously. I'm old enough to be your grandma. Baby boy. (laughs) (laughs) I I mean, like, the whole dynamic there is just, like, weird. And I know CP's already set it up for Aragon because now he's, like, a partial elf boy. And, like, he can live longer. And he's a writer, so he can, like, live longer. So, like, they can live longer together. He can live longer, laugh longer, and love longer. (laughs) name and dude <laughs> um i just it's set up and it's set up to happen and i don't want it to happen i just feel like it'll be gross and then like also what the fuck is nazawada gonna be like okay you know what i mean yeah of course so she was like looking like she was sad and weepy and crying lip trembling chin trembling or whatever the fuck was trembling and then she just took a deep breath and now she's fine and well, yeah she's regained her composure she's the leader of the varden right so she's 
no longer a human being. She's a leader of the Varden and has no well, emotions no, she's or trauma. Like composing herself and hiding everything. She's dead inside, but she has to not appear dead inside to the public. Wow, that's relatable. I can really relate with that. <laughs> um, I mean, I do have a lot of questions about things. So I guess it could be seven chapters worth, but... Full circle, baby. Because <laughs> I'm like, what's up with Elva? Like, what's up with Katrina? She got a baby? I have all these questions, but I would be happy with just one more sentence or one more chapter. I mean, it could, it could all... probably all be wrapped up in a chapter, though. <clears throat> so. Like, I really do think that it could be all like, they all just lived happily ever after. And then it could be like, fine. Like, at the end of every chapter, we're probably going to get... That could be it. Could have ended there. Could end it there. The end of every chapter, like from the first book, first chapter. <laughs> Could have just ended it there. It's like Arya's like running through the forest. <laughs> Aragon falls unconscious. Wait, hold on. I have a question. Can we go back to the very first chapter when Arya's running through the forest? Is she ambushed by Urgles? She's ambushed ambushed by Durza. The shade. Right, but there's other people there. Right. Who are they? Urgles. <laughs> what? Okay, so when I first read Aragon, when I started reading Aragon when I was like 13 or whenever it came out, um, I never got to the point of the description of the Urgles. So my entire life, up until this exact moment, I have not pictured Urgles how they are described. Mm, how are you picturing them? Um... Like the opposite of what they are, like tiny little squat, fat, little goblin creatures. Oh, like Lord of the Ring goblins? Mm -mm, no. Oh. Like little hobgoblins, like from Fable or something. I think that's the creature I'm thinking of. Oh, really? Of. Kind of more like that little, like a little. Oh. And then I just realized. Like grotesque minions. Yeah. Mm hmm. That's so... disgusting. <laughs> but then I just realized right this fucking second when I was thinking about that very first chapter that. It, the Urgles, like, when they, I think, are, like, described, it's, like, so far after that that I, like, forgot that that's what they look like. I mean, without going back to the first chapter and rereading. I'm going to look at it later. Yeah. I, I can't say, because I'm pretty sure there was a description, or at least, like, a small description of the Urgles. Maybe I disregarded chapter. the description, and I said, fuck it, Maybe I'm making up really my own shit. Maybe you just really to be Hobgoblins. I might have. I might have wanted it so bad. Who can say? Who can say? Do you have anything else to add to this? Nope. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> what a sweet moment that Murtag and Aragon were able to share and call each other brothers. That was a nice, a nice little farewell. And then they parted ways where they, last time they hung out together, they were on that bank or something. I don't know. <laughs> Not like the last time they hung, but like, you know what I mean? Mm-mm. <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> I'm not comprehending. It was just, I don't know what scene specifically they're talking about, because I'm sure he's referencing like something that happened in the previous books, but that it was like nice that it was like, oh, remember the last time we were here? Like, we were on the same side and like now we're parting ways and like we're on the same side, you know? Mm. Like all the things that have happened and... Full circle. Full circle, baby. Kind of. Well, yeah. It's, they're like, it's, it's, an, like... it's a part of the circle, <laughs> you know? The circle's being created, I think. Well, like, you know, full circle would be like, to back to the starting point, full mm -hmm. circle. But like, that wasn't their starting point. And it also wasn't really like a point from where they left off either. So it's just somewhere in the circle, you know? <laughs> um... I just liked it. I liked the. No, I did too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still going to say full circle. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a circle is full. Full circle. A part of the circle. Whatever. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching. <laughs> if you guys like the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe button and then the big bell button. And we'll see you in the next one. Holy guacamole. Hello?
Holy cow, dude.